everybody welcome to nighttime tales i'm heather and this is pippin right here my dog and uh we are here to bring you nighttime tales today um today's theme oh thank you today's theme is frida Kahlo, and she is an artist um from mexico she isn't around anymore she has passed away but she is a really amazing artist so we're going to be talking about her and reading a couple of books about her and then our craft we are going to do is actually um, because she is of mexican descent i found this cute little craft that looks like a mini doll version of her the picture's a little dark, sorry, but it's also in the style of a piñata, um, which comes from Mexico as well. So that is our craft. Um, for our craft supplies, we're going to need uh, tape, some glue, I have a glue stick and some liquid glue, um, a little piece of string, um, just about a few inches long, six inches maybe, um, a black marker, doesn't have to be permanent, some scissors, and then a variety of colors of paper. They can be scrap pieces like this. Um, if you've got colored tissue paper, that would work great too. So that's our craft that we're gonna do at the end. Oh, and a toilet paper roll, the most important part. Um, we'll do that at the end, um, but we'll start with our hello song today. So get your clapping hands together. We'll see if Pippin gets in the way. She usually likes to stand up for this one. So it goes, Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slowly as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quickly as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loudly as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quietly as we can. Hello. Good job, everybody. Thanks for singing along with me if you did. Um, if you're watching live, thank you for being here. Comment below and let me know you're here watching. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for being here as well. So we will start with our first Frida book. And let me flip you around here so that you are not backwards. Uh-oh. I think, okay, hopefully this is correct. I almost put you upside down, I think. Hopefully that's correct. Okay, so this book is called Frida Kahlo. I, I say Kahlo because I think that's how you say her name, but apologies if I'm saying it wrong. Frida Kahlo and her animalitos. Animalitos. Animalitos, which I believe is the Spanish word for animals, by Monica Brown, illustrated by John Para. Animalitos. This is the true story of a little girl named Frida who grew up to be one of the most famous painters of all time. Frida was special. This is also the story of two monkeys, a parrot, three dogs, two turkeys, an eagle, a black cat, and a fawn. They were Frida's pets, and they were special too. Wow, that's a lot of pets, and some very exotic pets too. I love animals. Frida had a parrot named Bonito. Like her parrot, Frida was colorful. She liked to wear bold shades that celebrated indigenous Mexico and her own heritage. She lived in a house the color of a parrot's bright blue feather, La Casa Azul, where she grew up with her mom, dad, and sisters. There's their blue house, that looks very beautiful. Frida had a pet fawn named Granizo. Like her fawn, Frida had watchful, beautiful eyes. When Frida closed her eyes, she remembered her life as a little girl. Frida was always with her father, a photographer, who taught her to look at the world through curious eyes. Frida and her father would walk to the park to collect bugs to look at under a microscope. Frida's father also taught her how to paint fishing, finishing touches on his photographs. Frida loved the small brushes and the beautiful colors. 
Yeah, it's very cool. There's her fawn, so cute. Frida had a cat with black shiny fur, the same color as her long dark hair. Like a cat, Frida was playful, but as a child, Frida couldn't always play. When Frida was sick, six, she got very sick. She was in bed for a long time, but Frida didn't get sad or bored. Instead, she used her breath to make mist on her window, and then she drew a door with her finger. Frida used her big imagination and curious eyes to walk out the door with a magic friend, a little girl who danced and played like a kitten. Wow, that is very imaginary, imaginative. Frida was independent like a cat. Frida's sickness left one of her legs different from the other, and children made fun of her. But this didn't stop Frida from skating and riding bikes and rowing on the lakes um, so that her leg could get stronger. Frida was not afraid to do things other little girls didn't usually do. She wore all overalls and boxed and wrestled. Who else likes to be active? Have you been riding your bike or skating or going boating? Skating is the most appropriate for this time of year. Frida had two spider monkeys, Oolong Chang and Kanito del Guayabal. Like her, her monkeys, Frida could be mischievous even when she was a teenager. When Frida was 15, she went to a school called the Preparatoria and found a group of friends she loved. Like Frida, her friends were curious to learn all they could. Together they read and studied and argued and sometimes got in trouble. Wearing matching caps, they rode donkeys through the halls of Preparatoria and set off firecrackers. Wow, they are wild children, aren't they? Frida had an eagle named Gertrudis. Like her eagle, Frida's imagination could fly high. When Frida was 18, she was in a terrible accident, and once again she had to be in bed for many months. This time, Frida didn't create a magic friend. She created art. Frida's mother made her a special easel and hung a mirror over her canopy bed so Frida could paint. Frida used her imagination and curious eyes to do just that. Feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? So she was in a bus crash. Uh, I think she was a pedestrian and got hit by a bus. So very bad injury, but she um, prevailed and became even stronger. And if those weren't enough pets, Frida had two turkeys and three dogs. Senor Zoto, Senorita Catalina, and Senora Costi. I don't know if I said any of those names correctly because they sound very Spanish. Frida's turkeys were intelligent and sensitive, just like herself. And like Frida, her dogs were warm and loving. When she was lonely or sad, she could wrap her arms around them and they would comfort her. Her Zolo dogs were, na were the same breed that ran and hunted with the Aztecs thousands of years ago, and a reflection of Frida's heritage, of which she was very proud. Frida's dogs had no hair, but their bodies were warm, and Frida gave them great big hugs whenever she felt lonely or sad. So her dogs are a breed, it's spelled X-O-L-O. -O. I think you pronounce it Zolo, like it's with a Z, but I'm not sure. And they're also known as Mexican hairless dogs, I believe. So that's her three dogs and two turkeys. Frida's animatillos were spirited and entertaining, just like Frida. When her two spider monkeys were being good, Frida would hold them like babies. When they were being mischievous, they would steal socks and fruit and leap through windows so no one could catch them. Her parrot named Bonito liked to snuggle under the covers while Frida took naps and would do tricks at the dinner table for pats of butter. Wow, that was a cool parrot. 
treated Anna Nikilos played all day in the courtyard at La Casa Azul, the bright blue house is house on Londres Street. Her husband, Diego Rivera, even made the animals a pyramid to climb on so that her pets could roam freely. So I think she grew up in this house, but it sounds like once she was married, she also lived there with all her pets. When Frida painted, her pets would keep her company, and Frida painted all the time while the birds sang, the dogs barked, and the turkeys danced in the garden. Frida's animals were her children, her friends, and her inspiration. So she is painting, and her animals are in many of her self-portraits as well, I've noticed. Frida painted when she was sick and hurting, and Frida painted when she was happy. She also painted when Diego was gone and she was sad. But Frida was never really alone at Casa La Casa Azul, the bright blue house on Londres Street. She had her animatillos and herself, and she painted both. So there she is, able to paint in bed when she was recovering. Frida painted herself with Fulong Chen playing with ribbons. She painted herself with Benito, the parrot, and Senor Zolotol, the dog. She painted her black cat, too, peeking over her shoulder. So they all are. This book's almost done. I know it's a long one. Frida painted herself with all the pets she loved so much, and even butterflies and caterpillars. Her paintings were magic. And today, if you visit La Casa Azul in Coyoacan, just outside Mexico City, you might hear the sound of a bird or see a black cat jump from the pyramid that sits in the courtyard of the bright blue house on Laundry Street, where Frida and her animatillos lived so many years ago. So her house is now a museum. That is really cool. I would love to go there someday. So this is more about Frida. Um, her full name was Magdalena Carmen Frida Calo Calderon. Very large name. Born in 1907. And she had polio. That was the sickness she had as a kid. Here is a real photograph of what she looked like. So there she is. And it looks like she's got one of her monkeys. That's very cool. Oh yes, it says with Fulong Chen. That was one of her monkeys. The end. And the quote on the back, feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? Love that. So I hope, I know that was a long one, but I hope you were entertained. Oh no, I hope you weren't upside down. My picture is looking up upside down. Hmm. I wonder if I was upside down that whole time. <laughs> um, if anyone is watching live, comment below and tell me if I was upside down or if my screen rotation worked, but I don't know. We'll see on the replay, I guess. Okay, so for our next um, item, we will be doing a yoga pose. So let's pick one here. Let's do... Um, how about, oh, that one, I don't know. They all look fun. I can't decide. How about tree pose right here? Because Frida liked to incorporate um, poses, trees, sorry. She incorporated nature into her art. Oh, Laura says I'm back the right way. So I was upside down for that whole book. Oh no. Okay, well, I'll see if I can edit this video for when we put it on YouTube for the replay. So sorry about that if I really was upside down that entire time. But here I am going to put you up here so we can do the yoga pose together. And I am not really in screen, I know, but I'll do my best. So for the tree pose, we'll put our arm branches together like this and we'll lift up one leg and put our foot against our other leg to balance. And we'll take some deep breaths. Breathe in and out. And in and out. Good job. 
job. Now let's switch to the other leg. So lift up your other leg and put it on your um, opposite leg. We'll put our branch arms straight out to balance. And we'll breathe in. And out. job everybody nice tree poses um i see oh i see we've got torah on watching hi torah hello if your girls are there comment below and tell me who's watching from your house here is pippin come to say hello <laughs> she's uh yep just trying to sit on my lap very good okay so for our next book it's a little bit shorter I know that last one was very long and I might have been upside down the whole time, so apologies for that. But this one is called Frida by Jonah Winter, illustrated by Anna Juan. And I will turn the camera the opposite way here, but this time I'm not going to flip my phone, so it should still be the right direction. What do you think, Pip? <laughs> yep, it looks correct on my phone anyways. Oh no, except it fell. Okay, hold on. There, we're back. Okay, try and balance this. I've got my phone plugged in to charge because it was dying earlier. So yeah, the cord is not helping this situation either. Frida, here we go. There is a sunshine. It looks like Frida. Frida enters the world. Look, she's riding on a beautiful, colorful creature. Looks like a dragon. There's baby Frida. For little Frida, the world is Mexico. Her house is a blue house. It is in the town of Coyotan or Covoltan. I don't know how to say that. And this font, I don't know if that's a Y or a V. So, <laughs> but her house is blue, just like we learned in the last book. Frida's father is an artist and photographer. He teaches her how to use a paintbrush. Frida's mother takes care of six daughters. Often she is tired. Often Frida is lonely, even though she has sisters. Wow, six daughters, that's a lot. Enter stage left, Frida's imaginary friend. Her name is also Frida. Look, they're like twins. They play games. All of a sudden, Frida falls very ill. She's in bed for months. There's something wrong with one of her legs. Even her imaginary friend can't cheer her. So here's the doctor. There's all these other imaginary creatures here. But look, what is she doing? That's when Frida teaches herself how to draw. Drawing her saves her from being sad. Look at all these neat creatures she's drawing. Very creative, coming from her imagination. After Frida gets well, she still wants to make art. So she paints little paintings. They are copies of other paintings. Painting onto photographs is what Frida's father does for a living. He teaches her how to do this too. Frida also paints things she sees through a microscope. She loves looking at things very closely. So there, the sun is shining on her microscope so she can see whatever she puts down there. We've got some fruit to paint as well. At school, Frida studies science. She is bored. School is too easy. One day, Frida is riding the bus home from school. A horrible accident happens. A trolley runs into the bus. Frida almost dies. So this book, it says she was on the school bus. I thought she was a pedestrian, but um, maybe not. So. Who knows, but she was in a very bad accident. In the hospital, it is painting that saves her once again. Painting is like her imaginary friend. It is there whenever she wants it. It keeps her company. It keeps her from giving up hope. So 
and there she is, imagining herself dancing through the sky. She's got all her little imaginary critters here. She's painting. There's her crutches and her paint palette. After the accident, life will never be the same for Frida. She will walk with a cane when she is able to walk. Her body will hurt always. And this inspired a lot of her artwork <clears throat> because she is very tough. But Frida doesn't cry or complain. Instead of crying, she paints pictures of herself crying. When she can't leave her bed, she paints in bed. When her whole torso is put in a cast, she paints on the cast. Nothing can stop Frida from painting because she's so often alone, unable to leave her house, she has it to use her imagination. She paints what she sees in her heart on top of what she sees with her eyes. It's almost like painting on photographs. There is a really neat look at one of her art pieces. She paints little magical scenes with words at the bottom. All over Mexico, people paint these kinds of scenes. Sometimes they are scenes of accidents with angels coming to the rescue. They are like prayers for people who are sick. They are called exvotos. Votos? Frida paints them of herself when she is sick or in pain. Frida Im imitates no one in her style. Her paintings are like nothing else in museums. People still look at them and weep and sigh and smile. She turns her pain into something beautiful. It is like a miracle. Long live Frida. And then here is some more information about Frida. Um, which we kind of talked about already. And the end. So that is our last book about Frida. Um, and now we are going to do our craft. So let me flip you over here. I think I need to put you like this. Just move my... There we go. That's pretty good. Okay, so our craft for today is going to be, if you weren't here at the very beginning, it's going to be this Frida Piñata. So because she's from Mexico and piñatas are from Mexico, I thought this was a really cute idea to create a little piñata Frida. So we are going to do that. You will need a paper towel roll. No, this is a toilet paper roll. Um, some multicolored papers or tissue papers a black marker, some scissors, a little bit of string, about six inches, we'll cut that now, um, some glue, I have a glue stick and some liquid glue, I'm not sure which I'll use, and some tape. So that's what we'll need to start off our um, little piñata. I think I will put the tan paper on first, and this is going to be what I use as her face. So I'm just going to measure how much I need and cut off this much. And I'm going to see if my glue stick works for this to glue it onto the roll. Get lots of glue on here. And we're going to create kind of like a pinata skirt by cutting little slits into the paper and then a couple of flowers using the paper as well. There, so I've wrapped my paper around. I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on there just so it holds it down. That part of it will be covered anyways, I think. So now I'm gonna draw her face on the front you can draw um, the face however you want, but one of Frida's defining characteristics is that she actually has a unibrow. So you can see in all the illustrations throughout both these books, she has a unibrow, which is awesome. She embraces it, and um, there is no correct way to be beautiful, and she is beautiful just the way she is. So because my 
um, pinata is going to be Frida. I will draw her with her unibrow. Um, if you want your pinata to be you, you could draw your own face on there. Um, whatever you decide. So she's gonna have some nice lips and then just her unibrow there. And I gave her some little eyelashes. I think I'll add another eyelash on each side. So there she is. That's my Frida face on there. And for her hair, um, she doesn't really have hair in this inspiration picture. I know it's hard to see, but she's got flowers on her head and cute little tassel earrings, I think. So we might do that, but I'm gonna start with her skirt and make some piñata type pieces here. So I'm gonna start with this blue color and we just need pretty thin strips of each of these colors because we're going to layer them together. So I'll cut this one a little thinner and then we're going to cut it in snips like this so that it um, kind of looks like pinata tissue. If you have tissue paper, that would be great for this too. Um, you could floof it up even more. Or if you have um, streamers, like party streamers, they're sort of that tissue paper material, that would work really good too. And we can kind of curl these at the bottom just by bending them with our fingers so that when we wrap it around here, she will have her skirt coming out. So it's gonna look like that. I'm just going to add some glue right along the top here. So I know it's kind of dark down here and hard to see because I'm working on the floor, but do the best I can. So we'll start it at the back and this is gonna be the lower most piece so we can layer more pieces on top here to make it even more colorful. So there, that looks pretty cute. And then you can bend these out more if you want as well to make them more floofy. This is looking very cute. Okay, I think I'll do pink next. We'll pink wrap all the way around. Oh, yes, it's long enough. So cut another strip of this pink paper. And again, cut a bunch of slits in here to make that texture of a piñata. Does everyone know what a piñata is? If not, I will talk about a piñata. So I do believe they are of Mexican descent. I think that's where they first started. But lots of people these days have piñatas at their birthday parties and they usually fill them with candy or little toys inside and then you blindfold yourself and you smack the pinata with a stick or something or a bat and then you try to bust open the pinata and out comes the candy so that's a fun party activity and this is just our version of that but with Frida. So she doesn't actually hold candy. You could cover the top and the bottom of the toilet paper roll if you wanted to put actual candy in there, but I'm not doing that. So I think I'll use, I'll make one more layer on her skirt and I'll do it in this orange color because I like this. Whoops. I think I'll make this one a little bit thinner. And, yep, that's about the right length. Okay, and then we cut it again. I do this pretty fast because I've had lots of practice with scissors, but
but you can take your time with this and cut nice and slow, being careful not to cut yourself or cut the paper in half. We don't want to do that by accident because I'm leaving just a little bit at the top that's not cut so that we can um, keep all these pieces attached. If you do accidentally cut it, that's okay. You can just glue the separate pieces on. Okay, so we'll put our last piece on her pinata bottom. And then I'll show you how to make a couple little flowers for her hair. So glue that on. It's more of a dress than a skirt because it comes right up to her face. So I guess it is a dress. But you can think of it as a skirt if you want. Um, because this isn't really the shape of anyone's body, so that's okay. It's a it's a cartoon version. Okay, for some flowers, I've got this pattern paper, and I'm going to draw a couple flowers on the back and then cut them out. So I'm going to do, there's a four petal one. I'll do a five petal one here. Um, and then I think we'll add probably some pink as well. So maybe I'll make a smaller pink flower. There. That one's kind of funny shaped, but that's okay. And we'll do a couple orange ones to tie in the colors I used. And maybe another pink one, because we can layer these up as well. So, we're going to cut all of those out. And if it's easier, you can cut it like this first, because then you don't have such a big piece of paper to work with. So, I'll just quickly cut a few of these out. So there's one, and then what we can do is use the end of our marker and kind of poke it like this and give our flower some dimension. And then we'll use our glue to glue that on top. So I'll cut a couple more out. I'm getting a little messy. I'm not cutting right on the flower lines I drew, but that's okay because flowers are all different natural shapes, aren't they? So our flowers can look like whatever we want them to be. Again, we'll give it some dimension like this. And we'll cut out our orange flowers here. You could also just cut out circles if you didn't want to um, cut out all these little flowers. I'll show you how that would look in a second here. So there's one orange flower. There it is. Um, if we wanted just a circle, we could layer this with one of our flowers. could put it behind and just give it a little dimension like that. And then we can glue one of our other flowers into the middle, like this. Poke it again. And then we can glue that onto Frida's head, like a headband piece. There's one flower. And glue another one on here. Whoops. Gotta let them dry too because I got too excited and knocked one of them off. Maybe I'll put the orange one in the middle of that. So I would like to add some more flowers to her and put them all around her head, but I will do that later because we're running out of time here. 
But to finish her off, I'll just take two pieces of tape and tape my string onto the inside here. Whoops, I knocked the flower off again. Have to let it dry, <laughs> but I'm too impatient. So, put those back. Stay there, flower. Oh, it's, yeah, I need more glue on that, but <laughs> um, we're going to tape the string to the inside of the toilet paper roll, and then you will be able to hang up your little pinata of Frida. So let's just glue that back on where it was. Glue back the orange flower right there. And now she's all done. And look how cute that is. And it's a great little decoration. You could hang this on your Christmas tree if you've got a Christmas tree up. Um, or you can hang it in your window or on your door handle, whatever you want to do. So let me just flip around one last time here. Chicken, do you want to come say goodbye? Come here. Do you want a treat? I brought her treats in today um, to lure her over. Can you come here? Good girl, sit. Good girl. Would you like to see some of Pippin's tricks? She's never done these on Nighttime Tales before. High five. High five. She knows high five. She knows shake a paw. Shake a paw. And she knows how to balance it on her nose. Can you walk over this way so they can see? I guess you can see. Wait. Okay. Good girl. <laughs> so Pippin and I say thank you for being here. Um, thanks for watching live or for tuning in later. And I hope you have a wonderful night. We'll talk to you next week um, for our Christmas themed um, Nighttime Tales, which is the last one before we have our little break for Christmas. So we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.